Let's go grassroots of uh, Welsh rugby now. Pontypool RFC's uh, corporate director, Ben Jeffries, uh, has sent an open letter to the head of the Welsh Rugby Union, Roger Lewis, and the main sponsor of the championship division that they're in, uh, Swaylak, uh, inviting them to attend a match and witness how club sides like Pontypool are struggling uh, at the moment. Uh, Let's talk to Ben now. Evening to you. Hi, Stefan. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. Uh, kind of intrigued by uh, your your open letter to uh, the the head of Swaylak and to the head of the, the Welsh Rugby Union as well. Um, wh- what sort of prompted you to do this? Well, I think this situation has been brewing for quite a long time for club rugby, and it's sort of just been heightened by the recent debate with the, the regions and the WIU. And for us, really, I, I've done it because uh, I feel that the clubs in particular have been left out of this wider debate about uh, the future of, of Welsh rugby. And uh, particularly, I feel that when you have a sponsor in Swaylek, that is obviously as big as it is, uh, sponsoring the club game or the grassroots game, as it's so widely referred to, um, I just feel like that more could be done to give us a platform and, and also on the wider spectrum, uh, with the regions as well and the WIU, I sort of feel there's a sense of abandonment at, at our level. And um, really, I feel that the only tangible way to, to resolve this at this stage is to invite Roger Lewis and, and uh, the representatives of Swaylak to see firsthand the state of the game and, and show how much it needs to change rapidly. Now, you say during this letter that Pontypool, amongst other clubs, are struggling to survive, sort of, you know, is, is that people coming through the gates? Is that the product itself? Or what, what do you mean? Uh, specifically, I mean the operational side of okay. the club. I mean, using uh, Ponty Crawl as an example, we have volunteers who have been uh, contributing to the club for 60, 78 years. And I'll use our kit manager, Terry Tiger Simons, as an example. Um, he lives and breathes the club. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't just put the kit on a, on a quick wash. Um, you know, without the club, I don't know whether he'd be around, quite honestly. You know, it means that much to people like that. And uh, without that type of contribution, um, I don't think the club game would have a future. And my main concern is how the uh, youth demographic uh, that's emerging, but I think everybody's so concerned with going to football as opposed to dealing with the issues properly. Um, but essentially, there needs to be more investment in developing uh, other facets to the game. Particularly, uh, not everybody wants to be a rugby player. Lots of people want to be a sports marketing specialist like myself, journalism enthusiasts. Uh, there's, there's an opportunity to grow the club game by creating initiatives to support young, growing people who want a future in the game. Have, have you heard back from either of the, the gentlemen in question? Uh, I've heard back from Roger Lewis, who's okay. been kind enough to take me up on uh, on my offer. And, and really, I haven't done this to be sensationalist or to be a bombast about it. It's really, uh, I think, the only way we're going to get a resolution to this is for people to see firsthand what we're talking about. Um, I feel like we've been largely ignored uh, by the regions, and I think they're starting to hold their hands up to that because they've had no other choice in the spectrum of this debate. And in fairness to uh, particularly, I'd say, the Blues and the Dragons related to Ponty Pool, we've had some very good discussions with them lately, and uh, I'm, I'm confident that if we can get through this, uh, it will be better for the whole game in the long run. I wonder if you've been ignored because there's too much going on at the moment to worry about the club game. And I'm not saying that that's the right thing to happen. I'm just saying that from from a pragmatic point of view, did you feel that that's what's happening? Uh, well, I think that's uh, symptomatic of why we are where we are. I mean, if you just do a simple exercise on Twitter of following every uh, rugby club that has a Twitter account, yeah. you're looking at probably twenty five to 30,000 people. Okay, yeah. not all of them are going to be uh, completely compelled by the product. But uh, there's certainly an argument that that's a massive segment of, of the Welsh rugby market that's been ignored. They were all ignored completely, in my view, when the regions were set up. Uh, I think what needs to happen, really, uh, in terms of uh, improving the profits of the game, which I, I'm sure Roger Lewis is most concerned about, and, and perhaps rightly so, uh, is to invest in in these types of things to improve the game uh, and see whether actually club supporters actually wanted the regions uh, and to see whether they still want them now. Because really, I haven't seen much evidence of any widespread marketing research being done with the supporters. And not only that, uh, people running the clubs to see what uh, incentives uh, they would like in exchange for essentially being feeder clubs uh, at the best for them right now. It's it's interesting, Ben, that you talk about the setting up of the regions because... Uh, David Moffat was in with us last night and I know he he went to one of your games last week as well. Well, What kind of reception did he get at Pontypool Park? 
Um, well, uh, I don't know quite honestly because our game was, was cancelled. Ah, oh, right, okay. Before it was due to kick off. Having said that, he did come up the uh, the local pub after the game and spoke with fans. And whatever you think of David Moffat, you can't take away from him. But he's he's quite willing to get stuck in. Yeah. Um, but personally, from speaking with. Uh, David, I, I get the impression that this exercise for him is as much about um, uh, repairing his credibility from from the fact that he incepted the, the regions 10 years ago, and I think he feels he has some unfinished business. And, and frankly, uh, the positive side of David Moffat being back is that I think it instigated the debate uh, for clubs and he almost acted as a mediator in some way because uh, there was nobody really in the middle of the regions and the WIU before he came around and rightly or wrongly I'm not taking any particular view on David Moffat but it certainly heightened the debate because I think it was going a bit stale <laughs> with nothing really happening so it sort of facilitated us getting more involved in the debate and um, I just hope that we get a resolution to this soon but I hope also that when there is a resolution clubs aren't just left to languish where they are at the moment because I can tell you it's got five to ten years at best in its current form because uh, when that older demographic is, is, is long gone um, there won't really be much of a club game to, to have around I don't think well, What kind of reaction do you think Roger Lewis is going to get I guess would be my, my next sort of knock on question from there Well I mean we have fantastic supporters at Pontypool, and I know that they understand the bigger picture of trying to convey their, their views with respect. But at the end of the day, what happened before with Pontypool and the WIE was a horrendous situation. Um, I think Roger uh, accepts uh, and can probably understand that he's going to be met with a lot of hostility. But frankly, um, we've done this because uh, I think there can be no hiding from the mess that the club game is in. And people at the top of the WIU and the regions have to take responsibility for it. And they actually have to change. Otherwise, there will probably be a vote of no confidence in the board of the WIU if clubs are willing to speak up and act. And I would urge all clubs who, who are listening to your program tonight, if you're not happy, raise the issue because we are working really hard to do so not for our own betterment this isn't a Pontypool issue this is a club rugby issue and I think we need to see a lot more people who I know aren't happy with the club game get involved start talking and let's get the message out there it's, it's the only opportunity we will have to change the club game and, and don't let it go is all I would say uh, thank you, Ben. It's a very interesting uh, final point. That, that's Ben Jeffries, uh, who's the corporate director at uh, Pontypool uh, RFC. Uh, right, Swansea City have...